Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to be talking about two brands, Swedish brand Totem and American brand Kate. I'm Anesusa Gonda and I produce educational luxury content for anyone after the finer things, whether you're new to money and wanting to learn how to navigate the terrain, or you're into luxury but you want to focus more on high quality, under the radar brands, or you're young and starting out in life and wanting to reap the benefits of buying a better quality from the get-go, then my content is geared towards you. I have been asked on numerous occasions to talk about Totem and Kate. Apologies, it has taken a while to turn this video around, but I really wanted to see Kate in its home territory, on its home ground, because it's a brand that has literally gained cult status. And I wanted to get a better understanding of Kate, see their showroom in its home territory, so I can make a, a, a better informed video, give my thoughts, having really seen the brand and the full selection of products that they uh, produce. But Totem, Kate, and together with The Road, those three brands, they're a bit of a, a trilogy or what's referred to in leather goods as the Holy Trinity when it comes to quiet luxury because they're the brands that pretty much are, are spearheading. They are at the forefront. They are some of the first movers when it comes to quiet luxury. And in the last three to five years, other brands have mushroomed within this quiet luxury space. It had its moment as a trend about a year ago, but if you're a subscriber, a viewer of this channel, you'll know quiet luxury is something that's always been there. It's just something that's not spoken a lot about, but there are fans uh, of quiet luxury. If you watch my content, you're a case in point, but there are other brands that have started to gain traction within this space and brands that I'm aware of, French brand, Frankie Shop, there is Byte Studios, Nilly Lotton, that I really wanted to see the last time I was in the US. I went to Bergdorf Goodman, but it was just, the service was just really disjointed and I left. An Australian brand called Camilla and Mark reached out to the brand in Australia. I really wanted to get a good understanding of the brand. Found out I was in London and <laughs> the brand went quiet. I thought they were, I think they may have been a bit anxious about the time difference and coordinating the meeting, but I was incredibly flexible and wanted to work around them. Hopefully when I'm in Australia, maybe in the next year or two, I'll take a look at uh, Camilla and Mark, but I like the brand. I like the little that I've seen in the United Kingdom. I like another brand, TWP. It's a new brand uh, named after the founder and creative director of the brand, Trisha Westcote Pound. Trisha is someone who's been on my radar for a while. She was the former creative director at Theory. I like Theory for basics. I have their trekker pants in the good linen in a number of colors. I like the quality, I like the cut, I like the style. They work with my physique. And she has started her own brand, TWP, focused on elevated basics. And it was actually a brand that was started off her passion to create the perfect button down shirt. And so that's a brand I really want to see next time I'm in the US. And then uh, you also have in that equation, Jill Sander, one of my favorite brands. And they are actually the OG brand when it comes to the high quality of the materials they use, the craftsmanship, the level of detail, the high level of finish you get from their products. They're absolutely fantastic. And they are ahead of the Holy Trinity. Uh, I've yet to come across a brand within the space in the price point that Jill Sander is in and offering the level of quality and craft that they're offering. So it's a space with a lot of brands that are up and coming that are doing really interesting things. They're all quiet, luxury, simple in terms of the style, timeless, understated brands. And I'll talk about some of them in the future. But in this video, I'm just going to be focused on Totem and also Kate. Totem was founded in 2014 and it's owned and run by husband and wife duo Ellen Kling. She's the creative director and her husband Carl Lindman is the brand director. I would describe Totem as an elevated offering into the entry level of luxury. They are focused on producing pieces that are high quality, but at a fair price point. The pieces are stylish, they're functional, they're fairly minimalistic in design. You're going to get Swedish simplicity. You're not going to get any designs or styles that are overly fussy or detailed. 
And the aesthetic is often compared to the row in terms of being slightly oversized. It's also compared to the old Phoebe Philo Celine. And their pieces are also transseasonal. I have been to their showroom in London on Mount Street. It's a fairly sizable showroom. And I've also seen in the last couple of months uh, a new showroom they're opening on Madison. I remember uh, walking towards actually the Kate showroom in Soho and I walked through Madison Avenue. I wanted to see a number of other places before uh, getting to uh, Soho. And I noticed that they are building a new totem showroom on Madison and then directly opposite that showroom they're building a new Kate showroom on Madison so the two showrooms Kate and totem will be directly opposite each other on Madison and hopefully they'll be open in time for Christmas but when you walk through the London showroom on Mount Street you'll notice they are focused on a fairly neutral color palette I spent quite a bit of time there because I wanted to really get a good understanding of what they produce their style the colors the vibe the mood of the brand and you'll notice they're focused on a fairly neutral color palette. Think of chocolate brown, black, navy, gray, tan. You'll see a lot of those sort of colors. Their clothes are made, uh, some are made in Sweden, Romania, Lithuania, Portugal, China. And their accessories, so think of their shoes, their handbags, they are made in Italy. And what's really popular for the brand, it's their outerwear. So think of their cashmere, their cotagans. Um, the jackets, uh, denim is popular for the brand, their basics are popular, and also their accessories. Uh, and in particular, uh, their front-running uh, style, the T-Lock handbag, which I've actually spoken about. It comes in two sizes. I prefer the smaller size, and I've compared it to the T-Lock from uh, Todd's. I'm going to attach the video above where I go into detail about both brands and uh, what I like, don't like, uh, and my, my full thoughts on both of those brands. The first time I tried to visit the Kate showroom, I arrived and there was a massive queue outside. And I'm somebody who in my personal life, I will never queue outside a showroom. If it's a showroom that's typically fairly busy, I will always call ahead, make an appointment so I can arrive at my designated time, enter, shop, pay and leave. And so when I arrived, saw the queue, I left and I called numerous times to try and schedule an appointment, but they never answered. I guess they were incredibly busy. And then the last day I had to be able to see the showroom, I arrived just after it had stopped raining and there wasn't a queue. So I was able to arrive and just walk straight into the showroom. Incredibly tall ceilings, dark, moody throughout, very little lighting, with the exception of a few strategically positioned spotlights. And everything is artistically hung and positioned within the showroom. It's chic. It's incredibly well put together. Kate is an American brand, as I mentioned earlier, based in New York, founded in 2016. And the founder and creative director is Catherine Holstein. It's a brand I would describe as an elevated approach to wardrobe essentials. With Kate, they're focused on modern designs, timeless aesthetic, but how they differentiate themselves from the other quiet, luxury, simple, understated brands is they focus on subtle but striking details, whether it's their clothes or their accessories. It's just a very subtle detail that takes the item to the next level that makes it stand out. If you are wearing um, an outfit, um, coupled uh, a brand coupled with uh, a Kate item, you will notice the Kate item. It'll stand out, the fabric will typically be heavier, weighted fabric, the tailoring, the design, the way the item will hang, it'll be beautiful, well made. With the bags, for example, typically classic shapes, maybe with a slight quirk, or it might be the accessories, the hardware, that's just very subtle but it just takes the item to the next level. So their focus is really on the subtle striking details together with phenomenal quality fabrics being used and exceptional craftsmanship. So they're really focused on producing outstanding items. Going through the showroom, I noticed they're focused on typically a neutral color palette, but I did see bits of red and aubergine creeping into the color palette as well. 
their clothes, leather apparel, they're made in New York. Denim is made in Los Angeles. And their accessories, so their bags, their shoes, they are made in Italy. What's really popular is their knitwear. They use a lot of cashmere, tailoring, and also their accessories are popular. I have been asked about the Lotus and Amelia Toad from Kate, which I've spoken about in the Best Toad video. The Best Toad video is actually one of my favorite videos that I've ever made. I put a lot of time, a lot of thought, and a lot of effort into that video. It's lengthy, it's 30 minutes, but it's 30 minutes of pure value, pure information that you'd otherwise not get anywhere else. And I hope in time it'll get a lot more views. In that video, the majority of the totes, in fact, all except for the last tote I spoke about, uh, were some of the most popular aspirational totes in the market as we speak. And then I ended with a quiet luxury tote. That's the best, that's exemplary when it comes to the, the quality of the leathers and also the craftsmanship that you should be getting from the aspirational brands that are charging double and in some cases triple what the quiet luxury tote is charging for an absolutely outstanding product. So if you haven't watched that video, please do take a look. And I give my thoughts on the Lotus Tote from Kate as well as their media and whether I think it's worth it. But Kate and Totem, two different brands. Totem is a lot more approachable, geared typically the designs I feel to a younger, funkier, trendier audience after timeless, well-made pieces. Whereas Kate is focused possibly on a more mature consumer, the price point lends itself to somebody who maybe has a higher disposable income, so typically older, and somebody who is after a look that looks incredibly polished and very well put together. So what do I think about Kate and Totem? Well, I like their knitwear, both brands. I particularly like Kate's knitwear. Yes, it's a higher price point. And their knitwear really stands out. It's thick, it's chunky. It's one of the items that really put them on the radar. I also like Totem's knitwear. It's not as luxurious, it's also cashmere. It's not as high a quality as cashmere. The design is different, it's not as soft, but it's still good quality knitwear. I like the designs, I like the versatility offered by both brands. Um, they have good knitwear. When it comes to their clothes, and it's particularly the clothing items you would wear frequently, your basics every day, as opposed to items that you wear once in a while or certain seasons of the year. What I noticed with uh, the bulk of their basics, their everyday, their highly wearable pieces, is they were made typically from a mixture of man-made fibers and natural fibers. And in some cases, uh, an incredibly high percentage of man-made or entirely man-made fiber. And the washing instructions were dry clean only. That presented a number of situations. Firstly, dry clean only is expensive. With dry cleaning, it, it is also harmful um, when it comes to the chemicals that are used to dry clean leaching into the environment and the knock on long term implications. And then the other thing really worth um, noting is that with dry clean items, with man made fibers, you will never ever get a situation where with a man-made fiber, the more you wear it, it's dry cleaned, the quality will decrease. It will never improve. You will never have a situation, for example, a pair of pants made from extra long staple cotton, beautiful, sumptuous, high quality cotton, natural product. The more you wash it, the better the cotton becomes. It softens, it ages beautifully. You don't get that with man-made fibers. The quality decreases with wear and tear, with uh, dry cleaning, uh, to the point where in some cases, it, you literally have to discard the item. And with Kate items, they are expensive. And I noticed a lot of the weighted, beautiful, everyday uh, pieces, suits, jackets, trousers, skirts, they were made from beautiful weighted fabrics, but a lot of man-made fibers. So with time, the quality will decrease. I really struggled with that, but the designs are absolutely beautiful. As I mentioned with Kate, you look polished, you look very well put together. What I also noticed with Totem, and I guess that's down to the fact that uh, it's geared, I felt, more towards a younger, funkier, trend-led audience. Their loungewear, which I liked and I would wear, but what I was put off was 
by the fact that it had a lot of uh, branding on it. Uh, you would see the totem etched on the items. And whenever I see people out and about, I can tell straight away that is totem loungewear. And I feel that will age, it will date. There comes a point you outgrow something like that. But then of course, there are people who like the logo and will always wear that. But it's something that I don't like. And I like things that are understated. And then the, the thing that I really didn't like when it came to Kate, I mean, Kate, I look at everything that they produce. I really like the designs. But the issue, especially when I looked at the leather goods, their bags, their bags are beautiful. Some of them have the wow factor. They stand out for the right reasons. They're eye-catching, but they're not very well made. I don't know who Kate have coupled with to produce their bags. I've spoken in the past about Bonastre. They produce some of Le Maire's bags. Their bags that are incredibly popular. They're beautifully made. Bonastre uphold Le Maire standards when it comes to Le Maire producing fantastic quality clothes and they bring in accessories that are very well made and uphold the standards. But with Kate, their bags do not wear well. I noticed a number of issues with their bags, edge coating, peeling, leather, splitting. Uh, the construction isn't the best and considering the price point, they are producing bags you will wear for a season, for a year, for a couple of years. And particularly if you wear the items a lot, they will wear very quickly and you'll start to see issues. And it won't be a bag for life, you may need to get it repaired. Possibly it may not be able to be repaired. So with Kate, I would never recommend their bags as long term. Something that you'd wear on occasion, bring it out once in a while so it lasts, very similar to Miu Miu. That is what I would recommend with Kate. Their leather goods, their bags are not very well made and they're to be used with caution and sparingly. So those are my thoughts on Kate and on Totem. Do any of my viewers have any of their items? Uh, which do you have? Please do let me know in the comments down below and how you're getting on with them.